Now we're going to set up the second shot in the sequence, HDB30. And just to quickly check the frame range, if you look in the HDB30 cache directory, first and last frame is 1140 and 1257. So I'll just set that in my project settings. And then jump to frame 1140 in the timeline. And now switch to HP30 using the scene graph variables. If you look through the shot camera, it should have automatically switched to the new shot and loaded the correct geometry. Expand the set, there you go, we've got a new view. And you can see the samurai in the center of the room walking towards the window. With our sequence setup, we'll be getting the HDB10 lighting, which should generally work for a first pass. Let's just do a quick test render. I'm going to rearrange my layout a bit. If you want Katana to remember your layout, you can go to Menu, Layouts, and Save Current Layouts. Okay, the render finished. Let's load in the HTTP30 undistorted plate. As you can see, the render is quite dark, so we will have to change the light rig to work better for this angle, even though it's pretty much the same environment. We are missing a few lights, which we'll see when we look at the HDRI. First step would be creating and grading the HDRI. So double check the db.txt file in the onset folder. O2 has the HDRIs for HDB20 which is great since we actually already created the HRI. We still have to color grade it for this shot though. So let's jump into Nuke to grade the HRI. I'll use the same approach as I did for HDB10, so I won't go through the steps again and let you guys do the same thing. I speed up the video and just slow it down here and there to cover a few things specific to this HRI. Okay, just to quickly jump in here, the one thing you might struggle with when trying to match the gray point is overall your HRI might get a warmer tone than what you see in the plate. When looking at the background walls, the wall in the plate feels more neutral than what I have here in my HRI. The reason for that is if you look closely at the placement of the Macbeth chart, in the plate, the Macbeth chart is influenced by the tungsten light from inside of the room. The tungsten light is considerably warmer than the sunlight coming through the roof or the window. If you match the gray tone one to one, you will end up warm, warming up your HRI considerably because of the tungsten light spilling onto it. Whereas if you look at the HRI, the Macbeth chart is just outside of the area of the tungsten light, so we need to compensate for that. And your best reference are the walls in the back of the plate. So if you find your HRI too warm, neutralize, neutralize your gray point a bit by comparing the walls and just bring them visually a bit closer. Do this in a separate grade node. Before we write out the extracted door light, make sure the counter grade we've set up for the HRI isn't switched on for the door light. Otherwise, you might neutralize the tungsten light too much. Just to show you, if you use the counter grade on the door light and if you look at the values, you're actually turning the light a little bit blue. And that's definitely not what we want. If you deactivate the counter grade, it pushes the light back towards the warm tones. Okay, now let's write out the door light. Okay, now you should have three files, the color corrected HRI with all the lights, the door light, and an HRI with all the lights painted out. I've kept the bright spots in the background because they are so far back, their position is okay. They will hopefully give us a bit of a rim and specular pings on the character. 
Don't forget to also create Chrome and GraySphere images to use as a backdrop in Katana. Okay, so we've got our Chrome and GraySphere ready. We can go back to Katana and set up our light rig. Let's set up our environment light first. Our environment light was created in the sequence setup, and I want to do a shot override to switch to the shot environment light in HDB30. To do that, We'll add another Gaffer 3 node in the shot work. Click on a little cogwheel in the Gaffer node and switch on Show Incoming Scene, and this will show any light rig created upstream. I could now create an override for the environment light, but in this case, I actually prefer removing the original end flight and creating a new end flight in the shot work Gaffer. So instead, create a new environment light and prune out the old one. I'll even name it the same, so that I don't need to change the multi-light output AOVs. Load the created HRI into the map part, and we've set up the end of light. I'm going to start with a color corrected one, including the lights, to make it easier to align our environment lights. The existing set lights we keep as is for now. Okay, before we orient the HRI to the plate, we need to move our spheres into the right position. Using the sphere VG nodes in the shot work, roughly place the spheres close to the door. And now I load the reference file so I roughly know how to align the spheres. For this shot, the camera isn't lining up well with the ref footage, so I won't get a really good match with this method, but I should be able to get a rough position Okay, this looks roughly to be in the same position. It's not going to really line up perfectly because the framing of the camera is so different, but it's kind of like a guide. At least we know where the height is. Now switch to the Chrome Sphere Pass to orient the HDRI. Remember to switch the Isolate node back on before running a live render. I also want to load in my Chrome Sphere image I prepared A good reference point is my ceiling light, since I have the LiDAR ceiling light as reference. Okay, this looks good. Remember to switch to the HRI with the lights removed. Once you're done matching the orientation and we have set up all the new lights, now let's set up the door light in, in there. I'm going to do the same setup as previously to create an incandescent light. Create a group stack just to clean up the material overrides a bit. If you forgot a step, reference the HDB10 lighting setup section on how to create the incandescent light. I'm keeping it in a sequence setup since it's valid for either shot. Let me just reset this to zero, and I'll start my live render. And I will, same as before, make my set visible again, and now take the new light and position it a bit inside of the room, and try to find the right spot so it matches the position of the door light you see in the HRI reflection. The reflection is also a guide for size and orientation. That looks about right. So we have our lights positioned, and now we can move on to, to exposure levels.
load in the gray sphere and compare the values between both. So we have about 0.013 on the shadow side and 0.11 for the door light. So my door light definitely can come up. And then on the shadow side, I think I'm kind of okay. It can be easier to identify the exposure if you just solo the light, but you still need to unsolo it to see the full influence of all of the lights. Yeah, I think I need to come up at least maybe two stops. That seems a bit too much. I'll actually go down a little bit by a stop. Okay, that looks good now. Okay, we have our door light and we have our environment light set up. The next thing I want to set up is the plate projection since we are projecting a plate for HDB10 right now. So I'm just going to copy the material override to HDB30 to get the correct bounce and load the correct plate. To load the correct plate, just go into the expression and change the path um, to HDB30. And now we can render the char beauty again. So it still feels very dark. And the reason it is so dark is because we're missing the sunlight coming from the windows up in the ceiling. And just to show you, we can see the window opening in our LiDAR up here. And that's where all the light is coming in and bouncing around the white walls. Our HRI was caught, captured around the door, so the room wall was blocking the view to the light opening. So we need to add an extra light to create the missing sunlight. We'll do that in the next module, the beauty lighting module. Let's jump into setting up the set pass. With the set pass, we will render AOVs to help comp add shadows onto the plate to integrate our CG character. Right now, if you render a set beauty pass, you'll get something like this because we still have to set it up. The first thing we want to do is add a DL object setting node and connect it after the variable set node and add the set collection to it. And in the object settings node, we'll switch compositing from regular to pre-lit. pre, -lit. pre -lit is a workflow specific to 3D light. It is a shadow collector pass in that sense, but unlike traditional shadow matte workflows, the pre-lit workflow by 3D light takes indirect lighting into account. You won't just get shadow information, but you'll also get indirect or global illumination information baked into the render. And the way this works is you will get an AOV, which we will switch on in a second. And in the AOV, if the value is below one, it's acting as a shadow. And if the value in the AOV is above one, it is an indirect bounce. We will use this to grade the plate in Nuke. Very important, when you set up the pre-lit pass, you have to add all the lights you want to be included in the shadow pass. In our case, we want the shadows of all our lights. So I would just middle mouse drag the light location into the cell statement. Just to double check, select the light geometry. You, sh you should see the compositing mode set to two. The reason I am stressing that all the lights have to be in the, in the composite mode set correctly is that otherwise your AOV won't work. If you don't want all the lights, you need to make sure to prune them from the pass. Last but not least, to avoid the set self-shadowing, switch off visible and diffuse. This will switch off self-shadowing and we will capture just the shadow and indirect of the character. And now to switch on the AOVs in the DLA settings node. And relight multiplier and relight reference AOVs. And now if we do a live render of the set pass and switch to the relighting multiplier AOV, you should get a gray image. And where the image is darker, those are your shadows on the plate. And where the value is higher than one, that will be your indirect bounce. Your set geometry does have to be quite accurate. If it isn't, your shadows won't align to the plate very well. All right, 
that is the pass setup. Save this Katana file as a new version. And let's render all the passes using the Katana queue disk render. And once that's done, I see you in Nuke. Okay, with the renders finished, let's quickly set up our Slapcom. We'll do the initial setup exactly the same way we set up HTTP 10, so I'll fast forward a bit. For the set pass, we do the same thing as with the set and set up the distortion with an SD map node. Now add a shuffle node and shuffle the relighting multiplier AOV to RGB. There you go. The quality is a little bit low. We would actually need to increase the sampling in Katana for this pass to get better quality. Don't forget in the ST map to switch to RGB. Just add a merge node and switch the operation to multiply. And basically that's it. We also need the reformat node to do a center crop to 2K DCP. All right, so that's basically how you set up the shadow mat in Nuke. Of course, we don't have all the geometry in the render, for example, the foreground objects. So we would have to create a mask, which I'm not going to do that now. The multiply node, basically for any indirect contribution throughout the plate, it would actually brighten up the ground as well. But because the sampling is so low, you don't get much of that. You can see a little bit here in this area. So if you run with higher samples, you would get better results. And now you just need to set up the rest of the passes, which I will fast forward again. All right, there we go. This doesn't look too bad. Like I said, lighting wise, we are missing the ceiling window light. So we will do that in the next module. I just wanted to show you the workflow to get the shadow passes in here. And you can, if you want, also add your chrome and gray sphere setup in here as well. For the setup of those spheres, I'll just grab the setup from HDB 10. Now the Slapcom is set up for HTTP 30. I'm just going to save this in the shot directory.